Welcome back, Agitators. Today we're going to talk about the number one Linux distro. If you know me, you know that I love Fedora Linux and I consider that the best distro, but does it make it the number one distro? Well, not necessarily. Here's the thing, when I'm looking at Linux distributions, there's some factors that I look for. Number one is, is the distribution very, very stable? I think that's the most important factor. The second most important factor is what is the ease of use? And I'm considering both installing the actual distro as well as installing packages in the distro. And third, how easy is it to use? So is it easier interface wise than other distributions? This can be a little bit of a gray area because of course there's different desktop environments. So. It depends on what desktop environment you're on and what you're using. Now here's the thing, linuxjournal.com came out with a list of what they think is, well, let me rephrase that. They did a poll and they released the poll on what they think based on their viewership, what is the best Linux distribution in the world. So let's have a look at that. So here is the Linux journal article released on Valentine's Day and the distributions that they find were best is number one Debian, number two OpenSUSE and number three Fedora. So based on their poll here Debian of course came in at 33 percent, OpenSUSE at 12 percent and Fedora hanging pretty close to OpenSUSE at 11%. Now, they didn't really give too much information. I would like to see more of the comments, but the users commented that with Debian, as for servers, Debian is still best or something similar. So this poll's interesting, but I really don't feel like you can take a Linux distribution and make it the end all be all. So you can see with Debian, many people are commenting that, well, at least according to the Linux journal, Debian is best for servers. Well, I think Debian is also good for desktops. I have done quite a bit of experimentation with Debian and I think it's great as is. And personally, I would definitely choose it over Ubuntu. I did go to the actual poll itself and here is what we have now they did it alphabetically ordered which isn't too awful helpful I'd rather see it in order of popularity but I don't know if anybody uses Al Alpine Linux or Antergos I'm not sure how to say that Arch Linux it's down there at 9% CentOS 2% Fedora is 11 of course Linux Lite at 0% with 21 votes, that's something. Uh, Linux Mint only had 7% or 641 of the votes. There was a total vote count of 9,269. So this is the list of what they considered the most popular. Now, the problem I have with this poll is that when you look at this list, for example, Peppermint is not on this list. So when you actually take the poll, you have this group to select from or you can write in a comment for other so if you thought peppermint was best you would have to write it in and it's only going to show up as other that my thinking is if there was actually a selection for peppermint on this list would peppermint users have been more likely to just select it than actually go down to the bottom and write in their favorite distribution hard to say so I guess this article's okay. However, I usually check out distrowatch.com. Now, distrowatch.com has its own problems. One, we're going by page hit ranking here. So this just means visits to the specific page for that distribution on distrowatch. Although, I do like it. Now, one point to make here they no longer do counters on each of the pages for the specific distributions 
and you only get one hit per day per IP address so you can't stack uh, the odds so to speak for your particular distribution by sitting there and refreshing the page four million times so that's not going to work so I'm not going to say these are a perfect representation of which distros are the most popular but it is a good indicator all right so check it out here so last 12 months number one in interest by page hits was mint followed by manjaro debian ubuntu and tirgos solace and fedora open susie and so on and elementary and true os are the top 10. So things don't change much for the last six months. We get kind of the same view. And then if you look at the last three months, pretty much the same hit list. And then finally in the last month, so it would kind of be similar to the poll that we saw on linuxjournal.com. We've got Manjaro up at the top this time <clears throat> with an increase of 3,425 and Mint followed by Debian, Ubuntu, Solus, Elementary, TrueOS, and so on and so forth. So is your distribution showing up on this list or was it accurate on linuxjournal.com and do you think Debian is the number one distribution? I'm curious to see which distribution you're using. Now one thing I do find interesting on distrowatch.com Ubuntu is here at number four, but on the poll on Linux Journal, Ubuntu's hanging around at 9%, so it's considerably lower. Well, is it? Let's find out. It's actually in competition with Arch Linux, and that looks like 9%, as far as I can see, yeah, would be number four. So. Let's see, Arch Linux 854 votes, Ubuntu 816, so it would be number five. Distro Watch, one, two, three, four, it's number four. So it's relatively accurate, at least for Ubuntu. Here's the thing. I don't know about you, but I actually had never heard of this poll before it was already put into an article saying these are the top three distributions at Linux Journal. Um, for better or worse, I don't really read Linux Journal all that much. I might be doing a search for some particular Linux-based topic that I'm interested in, and as a result, I go out there and I'm looking for that topic, and I might stumble on a Linux Journal article, but typically, well, actually, I can't say that I ever have, went and sat and read Linux Journal. And looking at this article I'm not sure what to think I I wouldn't think that Debian would be on top personally but when we go and look at DistroWatch again the problem here is what are we talking about are we talking about the desktop experience are we talking about the server experience I mean what's the angle here and if we're talking about the server experience well I could see where if you were to you know do a poll for that things would look very different CentOS might be in uh, heavier competition with Debian or Red Hat or whatever when I think of the best distribution I go back to the big issues number one stability and number two ease of installation and ease of use and with regard to Fedora I would say that stability is really good uh, ease of installation is excellent. Ease of use for a newer user, mm, it's decent. I think it is good, but when you compare it to some of the other distros that are out there, now I used to use Linux Mint a while back. This was years ago, and overall, my experience was excellent with it. I actually had set up my current laptop at the time with a dual boot so I had Mint and I had Windows and I really enjoyed Linux Mint and I did like that a lot of the software that I used at the time was already baked in including some non-free stuff and your average user that's going to be on Windows really is going to have an experience completely different if they're on Linux Mint or they're on Fedora Linux I think anyway and I can see why Min is at the top because the usability factor 
is excellent. I think people find that Mint, and it looks like Manjaro as well, are excellent. Now, Debian is there on the top three, and this is for the last 12 months, six, three, and the last month. So those top three have not changed over the last 12 months. Think of that on DistroWatch. Let's go back to the article from the journal. I don't really see OpenSUSE as number two. Let's check out DistroWatch here and see if we can find OpenSUSE number eight, number 10, number 10, number 10. So it is there, but I think it's a little off and more based on the readers at Linux Journal. And one of the commenters for the article for Linux Journal said, OpenSUSE is still available. I thought it was dead. Honestly, I kind of thought the same thing, but apparently it's still in development and kicking. So I don't know. I guess I'll have to have a look at that one. If I wasn't using Fedora and I hadn't basically grown up with um, Fedora and Red Hat, I think I would be using Mint. And it would be either Mint or Debian. The one thing that I don't like about Mint is it's based, it's a distro based on a distro that's based on a distro. So first you have Debian, which is really the base OS, and then you have Ubuntu, and then finally you have Mint. And I wonder if Ubuntu, for whatever reason, ended up crashing and they were gone. What would the developers over at Mint do? Would they actually just go straight to the core and build off of Debian? It makes me wonder. I, I would think that's what they would do, but it's hard to say. Speaking of Ubuntu, and this is a little bit off topic, but this is one of the reasons that I think you, if you look at Ubuntu, especially on DistroWatch here, uh, Ubuntu down in popularity, down in popularity. Six months ago it was up in popularity, but 12 months ago down. So overall, popularity is going down for Ubuntu. Here again is the problem I have with not being fully open source, okay? So starting with 1804 LTS, Ubuntu is going to be collecting data about you. And this does bother me a bit. Here's the thing. It's not an opt-in. It is an opt-out. And this is very much like what we're seeing with Firefox and the Mozilla uh, foundation and uh, subsequently the Mozilla Corporation. Well, Ubuntu is going to start collecting information, telemetry, usage about you, well, about your distribution, your installation of Ubuntu. And when private companies get behind open source, they, in my humble opinion, tend to um, abrogate the meaning of open source and what it's supposed to be. So let's have a look at some of the stuff that they're going to collect with the recent release, well the upcoming release 18.04 of Ubuntu. So here's what you can expect will be collected from Ubuntu. Flavor and version, network connectivity or not, CPU family, RAM disks, screen resolution, GPU vendor and model, OEM manufacturer location, supposedly based on the location selection that was made during installed. No IP information, time taken for installation, auto login, disk layout, third-party software, download updates, and live patches. The collection data will be made public to allow other members of the community to see what percentage of users are using which version, flavor, etc. Oh boy. So to me, again, we are kind of in the same boat as we are with Windows 10. You've got a for-profit company that is basically looking to collect data about you and then sell it. And they say they're not going to sell it, but I haven't went and read their privacy statement regarding this new collection scheme that they're come up with and, and I'm assuming they're going to try and make some money off of it and why else would you collect the information I, I understand that it would be useful for the company in the sense that uh, they could use this to 
tailor the experience with Ubuntu, but I think it's more valuable if they're selling it. So I think we're looking at, again, a problem where the company is going to sell that information. Anyway, back to the number one version of Linux. I'll be curious to hear what you have to say. Vote down in the description, well, in the comments. I, I really want to know what you think is the number one distribution. And if you are using Linux, what you're using. If you're not using Linux, what are you using right now? And would you consider moving to Linux or at least doing a dual boot experience? And if so, which one would it be? Which distribution would you use? Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. I don't even have to say it, do I? I mean, I don't have to say it. I think you know what to do. As always, I really appreciate your hanging around, viewing the video. Thanks for subscribing if you already have. If you haven't, go ahead and do it. Leave your comment below. Let me know what you would use for your Linux distribution or what you're already on. Thanks a lot. See you next time. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.